Welcome to a very blistery cold day here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Um, I'm here checking out several different cases. This is uh, one of the secret locations that uh, I had kind of hinted at that I was going to. Uh, so this is one stop of many, but in this video, I'm gonna talk about the very tragic, sad case of a young five-year-old girl named Phoenix St. Clair. And Phoenix died a really brutal death. So we're gonna get into all the details, of course. And I'm here at the Brookside Cemetery, and this is where she is laid to rest. This is one of those cases that I'm pretty sure will make all of you very, very angry, especially those of you who are parents, just knowing the fact that this young, innocent little five-year-old was just brutally killed. Phoenix Sinclair was born on April 23rd, 2000, um, she died on June 11th, 2005, so about three months or so after her fifth birthday, she died. Her father was Steve Sinclair, and her mother was Samantha Kamach. Both of her parents had previous involvement with child welfare authorities, and Samantha had another child who was actually taken away from her. Phoenix was immediately placed in the custody of the Child Protection Services, or I guess in Canada they call it Child and Family Services, as they were assessing to see if her parents were actually able to care for any kids. She was first housed in a temporary shelter and later on with a foster family where her parents, Samantha and Steve, were allowed to visit. However, not much longer after that, Phoenix was returned to her parents in September of that year with conditions that they would receive training on how to care for children and also supervision from, uh, the, again, that child and family services company. Phoenix had a sister named Echo who was born about a year later after her on April 29th, 2001, at which point another assessment was made but no change in custody was ordered. In June of 2001, only a few months after Echo was born, police were called to their residence for a domestic violence call. And only about a month after that, Samantha and Steve separated, where Steve ended up taking care of both Echo and Phoenix. However, on July 15th, Echo died of a supposed respiratory infection Summer 2001, Phoenix's case had been referred back to the Child and Family Services on many different occasions. That company or agency put Steve Sinclair to be the primary caregiver for Phoenix. In 2002, Phoenix's uh, file with that company closed. However, they opened up another case uh, for Phoenix after Phoenix was hospitalized in 2003 as the medical staff there at the hospital expressed really deep concerns that Phoenix was being severely neglected. When she was put in the hospital there, she had a piece of styrofoam lodged in her nose, and the hospital staff stated that it had been there for several months. She was taken back by the Child and Family Services in June of 2003, and placed in the temporary guardianship of Kim Edwards, who was a family friend. However, about a year later, in April of 2004, Samantha, Phoenix's mom, took Phoenix from Kim Edwards for what was supposed to be just like a small, temporary kind of visit. About the same time, Samantha ended up having a new boyfriend named Carl, or Wes, McKay, and Phoenix began living with them full time. Another child and family service file was opened up for Phoenix in November of 2004 when Samantha and her new boyfriend Wes had another baby. And of course, there was more reports of both of them being abused, including Phoenix. Samantha and Wes moved to a, a Native American land called Fisher River Cree Nation 
and they ended up taking Phoenix and the other child with them. And they also took one of Wes's other children from a prior relationship, as well as another son that Wes had. Another file opened up on Phoenix as, again, they determined that there was some pretty severe neglect going on. And that was in May of 2005. And less than a month later, on June 11th, that is when Phoenix died. So we're going to get into, of course, how she died. And again, it is pretty heartbreaking and infuriating. So in, in the time period leading up to her death, Phoenix had been physically and verbally abused by both Samantha, her mom, and again, her mom's boyfriend, Wes. She was forced to sleep in a very freezing cold basement with not much food at all and she was even forced to eat her own vomit if you can believe it or not. Wes ended up actually shooting her many times with a BB gun and ended up choking her on many occasions. He called it a game called choking the chicken. So he would purposely strangle Phoenix until she lost consciousness and then he would wait till she woke back up and would do it again. Meanwhile, Samantha, her own mother, watched and did not do anything to stop Wes from strangling her on all those different occasions. On the day that she died, Wes's 12-year-old son, who was living with them, saw Wes, his father, beat Phoenix numerously for 15 minutes plus until Phoenix stopped breathing. So essentially, Phoenix died from being physically beaten to death. Just absolutely horrific what happened to her. Now, you would think that Samantha and Wes would be arrested immediately for her death. However, they were not arrested for some time as they kind of played the game with the Child and Family Services Agency and the police by telling them that Phoenix was returned to some other family or that she was living temporarily back with someone else. And so they kind of kept playing that game where they're like, well, Phoenix isn't here right now. She's with someone else. Finally, in March of 2006, Wes's sons reported Phoenix's death to the police. Both Samantha and Wes were, of course, arrested for her murder. And Phoenix's body was found at a landfill on March 18th. So about a, a year or so after she was murdered. Wes and Samantha were convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. The Family and Child Services Agency was put on blast, of course, as you can imagine, since they didn't do their job. Um, they failed many times on trying to make sure that Phoenix was safe and she was anything but safe in that household. Anyway, guys, so we're here at the Brookside Cemetery here in Winnipeg. And again, this is where Phoenix is laid to rest. Um, so, of course, I wanted to show you her grave here. Um, anytime a, a young child is killed, especially by abuse, um, it really hits me deep. Not because I was abused or anything like that, but just because, you know, these are innocent children. They don't really have much of a voice. And when, you know, they are brutally beaten by those who are supposed to love them, it's heartbreaking. It's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And... Uh, especially in Phoenix's case when she got moved around so many times in such a short time frame and she was supposed to be cared for and loved by her own mother and she failed, absolutely failed to, to do anything to help protect Phoenix. I'm going to head out of here. Thank you for watching another video. If you're new around here, again, my name's Harmon. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys in Winnipeg on the next video. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.